It's been a long time coming, but finally there is a brand new Alien movie coming to screens later this year, and we've just gotten our first trailer for it. Directed by Fede Alvarez, who helmed the 2013 Evil Dead film and 2016's cult favourite Don't Breathe, Alien Romulus looks to be bringing all the gutsy shock value that made Alvarez's past horrors so buzzworthy, as well as some intriguing callbacks to Ridley Scott's Alien and James Cameron's Aliens. What is up everyone, I hope you're all doing okay and aren't stuck in a space station somewhere with a bunch of xenomorphs and facehuggers. I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and it's time to dive into the trailer for Alien Romulus, and why the film itself is shaping up to be something a little bit different than what you may have initially expected. First, a little context. Following the release of Alien Covenant in 2017, and Jesus God, I can't believe it's been that long ago, the general expectation was that the next Alien movie would come from Ridley Scott once again and be a direct continuation of the prequel storyline, with David and the engineers eventually taking us into the events of the first Alien. This didn't happen for a couple of reasons, one being that Covenant underwhelmed at the box office and the other being the Disney-Fox merger. I really like Prometheus and Covenant, so for the record I'm pretty boned we didn't get to see more of David um, doing this. I'll do the fingering. But whatever. It's a new era for the series, and we've got some more alien to look forward to from the guy responsible for this. Oh, you're so loud, you pathetic! Meet. Romulus itself, or what would become Romulus, was announced in 2022 as an unconnected spin off headed up by Alvarez. The plan was for it to come to streaming rather than theatres. But it seems as if Disney looked at what they did with Prey and finally realised, hey, this stuff should really be on the big screen, which means this will be landing in cinemas this August. A huge win for all of us as far as I'm concerned. Even better though is that while it had been speculated that Romulus would be a standalone movie, Alvarez has since revealed that this isn't actually the case. Apart from the trailer itself placing the film spiritually in step with both Scott and Cameron's entries, we now know that Romulus is an interquill set in between the events of both of them too. The synopsis, as per The Hollywood Reporter, is that the movie focuses on, quote, a group of 20-something space colonizers and scavengers who have the misfortune of meeting a xenomorph inside a dilapidated space station. Mmm, tasty. Alvarez has said the inspiration behind this premise came from aliens, and the idea of people spending their whole lives commuting in space, or waiting for a planet to terraform, as well as his own experiences growing up in Uruguay. On both a stylistic and lore front, Romulus's placement is very deliberate, which you can easily gather from the trailer itself, with its callbacks to both the isolated horror of Scott's alien and Cameron's faster-paced and action-heavy Aliens. You have the replication of the sound effects from the original Alien teaser, which is like the best trailer ever by the way, and a similar space vessel setting, but also multiple facehuggers and a shot of Kaylee Spaney wielding an early-gen pulse rifle a la Sigourney Weaver's Ripley in Aliens. There are also trailer clues that more heavily hint at the importance of Romulus's placement in the Aliens timeline. Speaking to the movie podcast on YouTube, and it's a really good interview that you should go check out for yourself, Alvarez discussed how the setting sees a mixture of older technology from Alien and newer tech seen in Aliens. The space station, called the Renaissance, is comprised of two modules. The Remus, which is an older generation craft of the kind seen in Alien, and the Romulus, which is newer and closer to those builds seen in Cameron's sequel. The title also has some interesting significance. In that same interview, Alvarez discusses how references to the Roman Empire are embedded into the deep canon of Alien with Wayland yutani The myth of Romulus and Remus is a creation story behind the city of Rome, of two divinely conceived brothers who feed from a she-wolf and eventually rise to become its founders. However, Remus attempts to kill Romulus and is killed himself by Romulus. Alvarez has drawn an explicit connection between this myth and the story of Alien, of mortals stealing the power of an aggressive creature and things not exactly going according to plan, and has also revealed that the film is a quote-unquote story of siblinghood, with both literal and figurative siblings comprising the cast and locales of the film. And speaking of the cast, that voice you hear at the beginning of the trailer is Isabella Massad, 
and Alvarez has teased that the dialogue in question is connected to a scene that made the crew queasy while shooting. He said he's trying to replicate the feeling of raw shock that the chestburster scene had for audiences in 79, and given his track record, I'm gonna take his word for it that it's going to be gnarly as hell. Even that brief snippet of the face hugger retracting is just ugh, not pleasant. Also, just as a last note from that interview and the connections between Romulus and Aliens, Alvarez revealed that he had called Cameron early in the production process to discuss the another bug hunt line from Aliens. No clue if this will have any bearing on the finished film, but hey, thought it was interesting to spotlight all the same. Another interesting thing in Romulus's favour is how practical effects driven it actually is. While this isn't me saying that all CGI is bad, because that's just a panly false statement to make, we're all smart enough to know that part of what made Alien and Alien so grungy and piercing was how tangible it all was. The sets, miniatures, costuming, and puppeteering all contributed to its inimitable place in pop culture, and it seems as if Alvarez is acutely aware of this. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter, the director revealed that they actually brought back many of the folks who worked on the original Alien to develop the VFX on Romulus, which is really cool. There's no green screen, all the sets have been built, and Alvarez himself even got the chance to puppeteer some of the animatronics with his team while shooting, which again, really cool. All of this, the love and admiration for the first two Alien films, wanting to find a space between them in the franchise canon, and wanting to replicate their technical successes, is all apparent in the trailer for Romulus, which clocks in at just about a minute in length, but packs in plenty when it comes to intrigue. The aforementioned audio of Massad is blood-curdling, and not gonna lie, I'm kind of terrified that they're hyping up this woman as much as they are, because I know this dude is not full of bunches. I'm also really curious to see just how connected this one is to the first two films. For something that was initially announced as a standalone feature, it's not really a question I expected to be asking. But now, I'm already jumping into my franchise timelines and thinking about what it could all add up to. Either way, if the whole appeal of Alien is existential terror, a humanity leaping beyond its boundaries and discovering something unfathomably ugly, then Alvarez seems to be tapping into that vibe quite nicely. The teaser is deliberately guarded, giving us only scant glimpses of the facehuggers and one xenomorph to go off, but that's the way it probably should be. Alien works best when it's about the fear of the unknown, and right now I am definitely doing just that, because I have no clue what this one has up its sleeve. If I could raise a couple of slight concerns though, I do hope this isn't the case of just smooshing Alien and Aliens together and getting a slightly derivative, familiar feeling sandwich. One of the best things about this series has been that each director has placed their own unique stamp on its approach and feel, from Scott through to Cameron, Fincher, and Jean-Pierre Junet. I'd hope that Alvarez's film will transcend franchise reverie and deliver us something uniquely him, and indeed, if glowing endorsements from Scott and Cameron are to be believed, then that is the case, but the trailer did feel like it was playing the nostalgic beats again, right down to the Ripley adjacent closer it ends with. In any case, I'm remaining cautiously optimistic. I'm one of those freaks who enjoys every Alien movie, so I'm sure there'll be something in here for me to get excited by, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Were you still pining for another Scott movie with David, or is this the most interesting direction to take the franchise? Also, did you catch any Easter eggs in the trailer? Alien fans, do your thing. That's all for now though, drop a video like and subscribe to World Culture if you haven't already so you don't hear the creepy alien trailer noise for the rest of the day, and I'll hopefully catch you next time. Bye!